from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Thank you very much. Good morning. A very warm welcome to St John the Baptist to you, especially if you're visiting or here for the first time. Do stay and enjoy some refreshments with us afterwards if you can. Uh, today is the fifth Sunday after Trinity. We will be thinking about Jesus being rejected in his hometown. Uh, we will be using the Eucharistic prayer A today. Let's take a moment just to gather our thoughts and to remember where we are and to focus on being in the presence of God.
I know a person in Christ who, 14 years ago, was caught up to the third heaven. Whether in the body or out of the body, I do not know. God knows. And I know that such a person, whether in the body or out of the body, I do not know. God knows. Was caught up into paradise and heard things that are not to be told, that no mortal is permitted to repeat. On behalf of such a one, I will boast, but on my own behalf, I will not boast, except of my weaknesses. But if I wish to boast, I will not be a fool, for I will be speaking the truth. But I retain from it, so that no one may think better of me than what is seen in me or heard from me, even considering the exceptional character of the revelation. Therefore, to keep me from being too elated, a thorn was given to me in the flesh, a messenger of Satan to torment me, to keep me from being too elated. Three times I appealed to the Lord about this, that it would leave me, but he said to me, My grace is sufficient for you, for power is made perfect in weakness. So, I will boast all the more gladly of my weaknesses, so that the power of Christ may dwell in me. Therefore, I am content with weaknesses, insults, hardships, persecutions, and calamities, for the sake of Christ. For whenever I am weak, then I am strong. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand. Alleluia, alleluia, I am the light of the world, says the Lord. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Alleluia. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus came to his hometown and his disciples followed him. On the Sabbath he began to teach in the synagogue, and many who heard him were astounded. They said, Where did this man get all this? What is this wisdom that has been given to him? What deeds of power are being done by his hands? Is not this the carpenter, the son of Mary, and brother of James, and Joseph, and Judas, and Simon? And are not his sisters here with us? And they took offence at him. Then Jesus said to them, Prophets are not without honour, except in their hometown, and among their own kin, and in their own house. And he could do no deed of power there except that he laid his hands on a few sick people and cured them. And he was amazed at their unbelief. Then he went about among the villagers teaching. He called the twelve and began to send them out two by two and gave them authority over the unclean spirits. He ordered them to take nothing for their journey except the staffs, no bread, no bag, no money in their belts but to wear sandals and not to put on two tunics. He said to them, Wherever you enter a house, stay there until you leave the place. If any place will not welcome you, and they refuse to hear you, as you leave, shake off the dust that is on your feet as a testimony against them. So they went out and proclaimed that all should repent. They cast out many demons and anointed with oil many who were sick and cured them. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. May I speak in the name of the living God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Please be seated. It seems 
pretty clear that to identify with Christ is to risk criticism or worse. He himself was misunderstood, rejected and eventually crucified. His most ardent follower, Saint Paul, was also rejected, beaten and eventually martyred. In the Gospel today we find Jesus in his hometown, teaching in the synagogue. Those who hear him are astounded. He is doing deeds of power that are the talk of the region. Yet, here at home, he is also resented. Is this man not one of us? Didn't we see him grow up? Do we not know his parents? The tendency to resent someone that we think we know, that we've got taped, as it were, who then gets somewhat above themselves, is perhaps a universal human tendency. It is, of course, small-minded, mean-spirited, and a recipe for perpetuating mediocrity, but it is perennial. So Jesus' neighbours reject him, they get themselves in a half, and he can do little or nothing with them or for them. Soon after, Jesus sends out the twelve to preach in the villages of the region. The whole, thing's, the whole thing seems somewhat risky, somewhat precarious. They are to take nothing with them and they are to depend entirely on local hospitality. And yet Jesus clearly does not expect that to be universally available. Where it is not, the disciples are simply to accept the rejection and move on. The extract from the second letter of Paul to the Corinthians starts with St Paul's slightly coy account of his mystical experience of being caught up into the heavens, where he says he heard things that no mortal is permitted to repeat. And Paul insists that he will not boast of those things, though we may feel that this is a classic early case of what has become known as the humble brag. Then we hear that this, uh, this exceptional experience is matched by Paul having to endure an equally mysterious thorn in the flesh a messenger of Satan to keep him humble. Many have wondered what exactly this fall in the flesh was, by the way, and nobody has ever found out with any, uh, or concluded anything that we can rely on. But Paul insists that this experience has taught him his complete dependence on Christ. His grace is sufficient. He has learned the importance of embracing his weakness and depending upon Christ. And it's this that allows him to endure rejections, calamities and persecutions. Now this was a period when the Christian message was a revolutionary one embraced only by a minority. And the consequences of falling foul of those who disapproved could be lethal and often was. Today we live in a world which remains profoundly shaped by Christian ideas. That may not be obvious to us all the time, but I think it is true. And it is unlikely that we are going to receive the kind of treatment meted out either to Jesus or to St Paul. But perhaps we should remember that there are a number of obstacles or opposition, we may find opposition to faith in these days. 
And as much as Christian faith remains, I think, significant in the way that we see the world today, not just us, but the whole society, I think it's also true that Christian faith is frequently threatened and parodied or undermined in our time. It's also worth us remembering, I think, that certain Christian ideas have always struggled to gain traction in practice. For example, the idea that we should love our enemies, the conviction that everyone is equal in God's sight, the conviction that the world belongs to the poor, well ahead of the rich. These are just a few examples of fundamental Christian ideas which have probably been honoured more in the breach than the observance. And if we embrace those ideas ourselves, if we stand up for Christianity, for the Christian faith, in a world which is increasingly unsure of it, sometimes opposed to it, and has always found certain of our ideas difficult, well, then we are going to find it difficult, trying, and we will frequently be rejected. Nevertheless, we are called to proclaim and live out the message of Jesus in our time, one when the world is more sceptical of its value than perhaps for many years. And we do so without the protection of an apparatus of power which the Church has enjoyed in previous centuries. And our default mode, I think, must be humility. But nevertheless, we need to combine a certain knowledge of our weakness with confidence. Not confidence in ourselves, but confidence in God and confidence in the call he has made upon us. The kind of confidence we see both in Jesus and in St. Paul. Because God remains God, and in him hope endures. We endure, and we shall overcome. Amen. Now let's pray for the 
church and for the world. And let us thank God for his goodness towards us. In the power of the Spirit and in union with Christ, let us pray to the Father. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, you promised through your Son, Jesus Christ, to hear us when we pray in faith. Strengthen Andrew and Joe, our bishops, and all your church in the service of Christ, that those who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love and reveal your glory in the world. And especially we pray for this church and for this parish that we may be enabled to witness to the love of Christ here in this place with both humility but in confidence in the God who goes before us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless and guide Elizabeth, our Queen. Give wisdom to all in authority and direct this and every nation in the ways of justice and of peace, that we may honour one another and seek the common good. We give thanks for the return, gradual perhaps, of life to much more like normal. And we pray for those whose job it is to make decisions about the further um, relaxation of restrictions and for those who continue to struggle with the effects of the pandemic, whether they be affected by it themselves directly thinking perhaps particularly of our schools, our teachers and our children, and also for those in the NHS who continue to work hard to care for those affected. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give grace to us, our families and friends, and to all our neighbours, that we may serve Christ in one another and love as he loves us. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind or spirit, especially Chrissy, Joyce, Joy, Bill, Christine, Malcolm, Denise, Martin, Anna, Ian, Graham and Margaret, Joan and Christine. And we ask you to be especially with Clive and Anna at this time as they deal with the aftermath of a fire in their home while they were away. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. Hear us as we remember those who have died in the faith of Christ. According to your promises, grant us with them a share in your eternal kingdom. Rejoicing in the fellowship of St. John the Baptist and of all your saints, we commend ourselves and the whole creation to your unfailing love. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Will you please stand? We are the body of Christ. In the one spirit we were all baptised into one body. 
Let us then assume all that makes for peace and builds up our common life. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Thank you very much. Please offer one another a sign of that peace without moving very much.
Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right. It is our duty and our joy at all times and in all places to give you thanks and praise, Holy Father, Heavenly King, Almighty and Eternal God, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. For he is your living word. Through him you have created all things from the beginning and formed us in your own image. Through him you have freed us from the slavery of sin, giving him to be born of a woman and to die upon the cross. You raised him from the dead and exalted him to your right hand on high. Through him you have sent upon us your holy and life-giving spirit and made us a people for your own possession. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Accept our praises, Heavenly Father, through your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. And as we follow his example and obey his command, grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us his body and his blood. Who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Hallowed be your name, your kingdom come. 
forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Draw near with faith. Receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and his blood, which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that he died for you. And feed on him in your hearts, by faith, with thanksgiving.
prays that when we were still far off, you met us in your Son and brought us home. Dying and living, he declared your love, gave us grace, and opened the gate of glory. May we who share Christ's body live his risen life. We who drink his cup bring life to others. We whom the Spirit lights give life to the world. Keep us firm in the hope that you have set before us, so we and all your children shall be free, and the whole earth live to praise your name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. We are still uh, collecting both offers and gifts to go into our auction, uh, which is on the 24th of July. It's going to be a picnic too. I hope the weather's a little better than it appears to be today. So hope you're going to come with your picnic on the 24th of July and ready also to participate in an auction which will raise funds for St. John the Baptist. Um, this week, Alice is manning the Seat table um, in Cornerstone to receive your items and promises. The last of the series entitled um, God's Mission and Tomorrow's Church takes place this Tuesday at 8pm uh, on Zoom. Thankfully, the England-Denmark semi-final can you believe such a thing? The England-Denmark semi-final is taking place on Wednesday evening, so we're in clear. Unless any of you are Italian or Spanish, which is, that's the one that's happening on the Tuesday, you have to record that one. Anyway, it's 8pm, Zoom, the third one, last one, how the church might look in the future, how can we need, meet the needs of the world and remain ourselves, even if you've missed the other two, you should still be able to get into it. And if you want to see what we've done in the last two, I can easily send you the presentations. So, and all the Zoom details are in the notice sheet. Uh, nearly it, I think. Um, yes, it's quite a day today uh, for returning towards normal. We held our 8 o'clock um, uh, service, communion service before this. And this evening we are returning to the practice of our once a month evening service. This month it's a choral evening song. So come along if you can at 6.30. And it's a service, it's, it's an absolute classic Anglican service. And the kind of the idea is you let yourself be carried along by it. What could be nicer on Sunday evening? And the choir are doing all the work, really. Okay? And you just can just be here in the presence, in a meditative state, in the presence of God. So that's at 6 30 tonight. Will you please stand? May the Father, from whom every family in earth and heaven receives its name, strengthen you with his Spirit in your inner being, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.